This is Hannibal from the Hannibal TV dot com and I was literally asked by 30 of my viewers to review the Brawl for All Vice documentary so I did because I like to uh, please you guys and first of all uh, I thought the documentary was all right overall although the playing of the Jim Cornette, Vince Russo feud into it all, I thought was the most boring part of it because I'm sick of hearing about that feud and really it didn't belong in a documentary about the book Brawl for All. Uh, the, the Brawl for All basically was not sanctioned fights, even though they were real competitive matches where you could do takedowns or punch. Uh, they were not sanctioned by any commissions. The commissions probably could have technically um, fined the WWE for putting on those events, but they probably just figured that the matches were fake because they were put on as part of wrestling shows. So they fell under the category of wrestling. Uh, they like to present this Brawl for All as if nobody really liked it or found it interesting. But these took place in 1998. We're now 2020, so 22 years later, and people are still talking about it. And I specifically remember um, in those days in Canada, we did not get wrestling live. Um, we didn't get the USA Network. It aired on TSN or something. Um, and I remember that, like, I would record Raw for the most part, and I would, like, fast forward through it. And I remember during the Brawl for All segments, uh, when they were doing those, I remember that, like, the first thing I would watch was the Brawl for All when I would review that. And, of course, that was during the Attitude Era. Everybody gave Vince Russo credit in this documentary for creating the Brawl for All. And a lot of these same people, like the Jim Cornettes and the Jim Rosses of the world, are the same people that like to constantly criticize Vince Russo. But the fact of the matter is, he was head writer during the Attitude Era so you don't want to give them credit for any of the Attitude Era success, but you'll, you will say that he was responsible for the Brawl for All, which, by the way, Vince McMahon would have had to approve. Vince McMahon's wrestlers were under contract, so yes, they were being put in more harm's way by doing these Brawl for Alls, but ultimately Vince McMahon had to approve it. So I find it funny that they kind of used... Vince Russo is the scapegoat for all of this. And he also played a great heel in the documentary, taking credit for it. And before I go any further, uh, I put my link to my little compilation video about the Brawl for All, containing interviews from people that were in the Brawl for All, uh, some of which were not in this documentary. So I highly suggest you guys look in the description. I'll also pin it to the top of the comments my compilation video about the Brawl for All because it gives you another side to it again. Although what Vince Russo told me in my video is very similar to what he said in this documentary. Uh, Jim Ross did bring up in this that Quebecer Pierre wrestled in the Brawl for All with only one eye. And Quebecer Pierre, for instance, he with only one eye, he wouldn't be able to get sanctioned to fight by regular boxing or MMA commission. One of the main reasons is depth perception. Your depth perception as far as blocking and avoiding strikes is off if you only have one eye. And the other issue is uh, if you get blinded in your good eye, you could be permanently blind. Uh, they did interview Draws for this as well as Jim Ross, Bart Gunn, Vince Russo, the Godfather, and Butterbean. Bart Gunn looks totally different now. I wouldn't have recognized Bart Gunn. Uh, they talked about uh, Dr. Death's uh, appearance in Brawl for All and how 
they originally wanted Dr. Death to win the whole tournament. They expected him to win the tournament. Um, and then they wanted to have Austin if he had won. But not only did he not win the tournament, he got seriously injured in the match. And he ended up still being under contract for about a year after, I guess, according to Dave Meltzer. Um, but he ended up getting fired. Apparently, according to Dave Meltzer, for refusing to do an FMW tour in Japan that WWE wanted him to do, uh, he ended up going to All Japan and WCW in the later years of his career. And Bart Gunn, of course, did All Japan as well as had some MMA fights in his later years. They tried to act like, uh, although like it did definitely end Bart Gunn's wrestling career to lose in the Brawl for All for Butterbean. Never wrestled for WWE again, I don't believe. But he did have some success in All Japan. Butterbean tried to make it seem in this interview like they brought him in as punishment for Bart Gunn for winning the tournament because they didn't want Bart Gunn to win the tournament. That makes absolutely no sense at all. They've had Bart Gunn under contract for so long by that point. They put so much money into him through his years of the smoke and guns, uh, the new uh, the new Midnight Express, tried a bunch of different gimmicks with him. Then they do then they do the brawl for all with him, but they don't give him a match against Austin. They don't know what to do with him. But Apparently, according to Dave Meltzer, anyways, many in the WWE believe actually beat Butterbean because they weren't really boxing people and Bart, uh, Butterbean wasn't considered that great a boxer. But why would you, in a million years, take the guy that just beat your roster in the Brawl for All and as punishment feed him to Butterbean to get knocked out? And I don't know if it went a minute. It didn't, it didn't go very long, but to make your entire roster look bad. And then, to my knowledge, I don't think they ever used Butterbean again. So Jim Ross said it in this. I believe a couple other people also said it in this. It did not get anyone over. Nobody in the Brawl for All got over. It caused a lot of injuries. Um, I agree with that. But I disagree with the people that were saying that it wasn't entertaining because it was definitely entertaining, 100%. Uh, it's also interesting on here that Jim Cornette actually said he wants to kill Vince Russo. Vince Russo has alleged that Jim Cornette has threatened not only killing him, but his family before. So for the people that are always against Russo, Jim Cornette is making threats to kill. And he does, I know he's a good actor, but he does seem to have quite a huge hatred uh, for Vince Russo, who, by the way, Vince Russo did not book the WrestleMania main event last weekend between John Cena and The Fiend, which involved wrestlers evaporating into thin air, wrestlers teleporting. Uh, there's been so much horrible crap on wrestling in the last few years. I hardly think Vince Russo is the worst writer of all time. He was actually the head writer during the Attitude Era, which was arguably one of the most popular eras of wrestling. So that's my opinion on the Brawl for All episode of Vice. And again, I'd highly suggest you guys Look in the description or comments um, to watch my own compilation video about the Brawl for All. I think it would be interesting if they did something like that again. I would watch that. I would actually watch that. And I don't watch uh, WWE. But if they did a Brawl for All type thing, I would probably watch it. And who knows? Maybe they might with the, uh, with the, with the talk going on about all this, maybe they might. They did do in Tough Enough, the Tough Enough that uh, Daniel Pewter won. 
if you guys remember, the final contest of that Tough Enough was Daniel Pewter beating The Miz. It was supposed to be for a million-dollar contract. Uh, nobody got a million dollars out of that Tough Enough. They ended up releasing Daniel Pewter 